Okay, good morning. <clears throat> Waiting for news to join. Good morning and welcome back to all of you. My name is Vishal Manocha, owner and director at Networth Immigration Solutions. We are live back into another yet immigration session, which is going to be a live update about, basically it's a live session about whatever update we have from last one week and also giving you an opportunity to ask your question, put them into comment section and we will be happy to answer them. My name is Vishal Manocha. I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. Our office is based in Brampton, Ontario. We have another office education in Alberta. We have office back home in India, in Karnal, and you can take all the immigration services you need from our company. We have a rich experience of more than almost 20 years now getting those, uh, getting your immigration files processed and getting them processed very at very high success rate. So thank you all for joining in and welcome all to our session. This is going to be another lively session. This is usually for around 20 to 30 minutes where we give you updates from the last one week and also give you an opportunity to ask whatever questions you have. So we're gonna discuss something very exciting today which was a result of three days cabinet meet at Prince Edward Island which is going to be now, a, which was the topic of the week to be discussed and we will be discussing about it. The topic is Will the international student number will be capped by Canada in the coming days or years? We will be talking a lot more about this today. This will be the topic of the discussion of the session because that is something very interesting to know more about it and will exactly can that happen? Can that happen or will that be backed by the university and colleges? We will be talking about it. Then after that, we do have a, there was no express entry door, so nothing much to discuss about that. But we will still discuss about the previous draw, how, uh, how much the invitation was sent and what was the CRS score and what we can expect further out of it. Then we will be also touching base on spousal open work permit and spousal PR application today because there are a lot of international students who have just come to Canada and who are just coming to Canada. And the next topic of discussion will be all the students who have come to a private college for fall intake, what, uh, what you should do now, you are already here. Do you know exactly what the rules are? How will you get your post-graduation work permit? So we will also be talking talking about that too. So, but let's first start with the most exciting uh, news, which was uh, still a news. There is no confirmation yet, but yes, there are a lot of rumors rumors here. But there was an announcement. There was a cabinet ministry uh, cabinet ministry uh, got together in Prince Edward Island, and the topic of discussion was the major topic of discussion was definitely the house crisis which Canada is facing and one of the news which has come up after the three-day summit is that maybe international student number will be capped because that could be one of the reason which is creating the housing crisis. Is that true? Not exactly to be honest. It is not true. International student is not the only factor. Yes, there may be a better factor but not something which is definitely affecting too much. There are a lot of other factors we think Definitely IRCC need to work, not IRCC Canada as a whole need to work out if they are looking to resolve the housing crisis. Now what exactly is the problem with the housing crisis and how immigration or student visa is affecting that, let's discuss about that too now. Canada has got the, uh, uh, right now is into the place where they have got the maximum housing crisis. There are less number of houses, in fact much less number of houses as compared to the number of invitations like uh, immigrants being invited to the country and number of international students being invited. If we just talk about last year, there were 800,000 international students who entered Canada. Obviously, those students who have entered Canada, they need their accommodation and place to live. Because there's too, number, too many number of people coming in and less number of supply available, less number of houses available, so the average rent has almost doubled in the last two, three years before pandemic and now if you talk about is almost double a normal basement rent is around two thousand dollars and in fact international students are living in a basement at paying five hundred dollars and they are hardly getting a mattress to sleep at the house some of the students we have found out are even uh, taking shelters at the religious places like gurdwaras and temples so yes that is concerning international students deserve much much better than that they have invested around $30,000 to get a Canadian visa and if that's what they have to get, 
that is definitely need to be improved and so the uh, cap is one of the suggestion which has been given but we uh, but if we talk about more in detail we don't think it is going to too much be uh, like it's going to come up because already it's been opposed by the universities already quebec has already said a no to no international cap coming up because international student is a big resource of revenue for canada billions and billions of dollars come to canada every year because of international student so putting a cap on international student will definitely affect the whole economy so what are likely the chances not very high but will there be any restrictions coming up maybe because the major concern ontario uh, the ministry has concern in this one is the private career colleges who have got uh, their number gone very very high so that is one of the major factor which is uh, like which came into the mind of the immigration maybe minister or the housing minister that is something they may crack on that will be the private institutions who have got numbers of international students coming in and they may not have resources so those may see something com- coming up as an effect let's see even that is may may or may not come up but definitely public universities and colleges will definitely will not be affected with this one but still we have to see how it goes from here but does the international student coming in is affecting the housing prices yes to an extent but that is not the only factor there are a lot of other factors basically which are affecting the housing prices the most important one is the skill shortage second is the supply of the material which is definitely again affecting the housing prices now there there are a lot of factors to be considered before any decision is been take, taken even the topic of discussion was maybe they want they should lower down the immigration number at least for couple of years so that the things ease up the uh, the supply and demand is back to normal and then may increase the immigration but even that may not work because canada is has an aging population they have aging skilled people who are retiring very soon the only way to fill up the skill shortage is through inviting more immigration so yes it's a viscous circle where immigration ministers and everybody are involved and they are trying to figure out a best solution to this crisis but immigration is actually beneficial for them to recover from this crisis because they need more skilled people that is the reason we have seen that IRCC have already introduced category specific draws we have skin skill trade draws healthcare draws stem draws they need those people because they have skill shortage so i don't think immigration will be affected a lot there may be few things changing coming up maybe few cap coming for the international student on private colleges but overall it should still remain the same the immigration will still be high in the coming years next year in 2024 canada have announced a half a million of people they want to come into canada although the new revised plan will be discussed in november this year again and will be announced by the new immigration minister by end of by middle of november but we will still have to see how this is going to affect <clears throat> and will there be any changes into the immigration plan as of we know 2024 they are expecting around half a million people to immigrate to canada and those does not cover international student that does not cover the dependent or spouse of people who are coming in they only cover basically the uh, exp- the people who have been invited to expo entry all through all other streams Canada have got almost i think more than 100 stream through which you can immigrate to Canada but let's see let's see uh, and hope how it goes from here international student cap it will be interesting to see what new updates we get but right now it has not been taken very good by the universities and colleges especially Quebec as a whole they have already declined that idea that they don't want to put any cap on international student because every con- uh, western country knows immigration and student uh, international student revenue is one of the biggest resources and that's how they are getting their gdp growth and a lot of billion dollars coming in but we will be as i said interesting to see will there be any changes coming up will there actually be a cap on the international students that time will tell doesn't seem very realistic maybe few things here and there changing up but overall the international student market still is going to be very much high they will you can still expect to get a lot of visas to be granted to international students and they can complete their uh, education and dream of settling down in canada but all the international students who are coming to canada definitely they need to be more planned they should know where they are going which college they are going to study what will be the program they are taking and will that lead to post graduation work permit or not that should be very very important before they make a decision of going to a college 
they should check that if it's the college is making you eligible to get a postgraduate work permit if you have that definitely you have chances of uh, getting the uh, postgraduate work permit and PR later on but if we talk about international students permanent residency through Canadian experience class which was one of the most popular stream during pandemic that has totally disappeared now there has been no draw for Canadian experience class from almost last one year which is again disappointing for international students so you have to find out way, your ways of getting permanent residency maybe moving to other provinces maybe the provinces which are more demand uh, where the jobs are still available you may be considered using to, moving to those provinces after completing your education or even uh, initially also you can decide on going to that particular institutions for your uh, for your education because Ontario and BC have got more of, more of the strict rules where you can get your permanent residency but other provinces especially like Atlantic region provinces where you can even get your permanent residency only with uh, six months of experience in critical stream so those are the options you can still select yes Ontario does have also a lot of options but you may have to consider as an international student other provinces for your permanent residency may be a better idea as compared to coming to Ontario or BC but yes, there are still a lot of options we know. If we talk about express entry, there was no draw this week. The last previous draw was last Wednesday and the score was 496. Number of invitations was higher than the previous one for 800. So the draw did, did drop down last week, but there was no draw this week. I think it's usually happening every fortnight. Maybe next week you'll see one of the uh, category specific draw coming in. Last time also we discussed about how, which will be the most important or which will have the number of more invitations coming will be the STEM people with the STEM background, STEM education, STEM experience field they will be the highest number of people invited although trade right now they are saying is the second uh, option they look for but I think trade should also be invited because if you we does the initial topic we discussed about housing crisis also depend on the trade people they don't have trade people, Canada don't have trade people the experienced people they need to build those houses that is one of the factor and definitely i'm pretty sure Canadian immigration will be focusing getting more of the skilled worker uh, from this industry getting into canada and resolve the housing crisis because putting a cap on international student may just affect a little bit but that is only 15 percent of the problem as compared to the rest of the 85 percent factor which are contributing to the housing crisis but maybe improvement in all the other factors will in give an overall improvement on the housing crisis and the immigration and student visa will something we need to look forward in the coming weeks are there any uh, let's see if there is any further announcement being made after this meeting definitely is not going to have uh, effect or happen immediately but there will be options uh, there will be few further information or further news will be released after now the meeting is already ended for the three-day cabinet meet met at PEI it's already done so you can expect a new further update coming up in the following weeks which will be interesting to see will they actually put up a cap or they find out some other ways to end up this housing crisis if you have any question i've seen one question just now came in from a card this session is definitely about giving you an update giving you solutions to your problem regarding immigration but also giving you an opportunity to ask your question put them into the comment section and the best time for us to answer those questions for you live and give you a solution to your problem right away if you have any question i know there are a lot of viewers who join us every week thank you most of the viewers we know are new and all of all of them join every friday at 11 a.m and respect like in india right now at 8 30 p.m when we have the show thank you all viewers are joining but i we do encourage all our viewers to kindly put question into the comment section so that we can answer them for you let me take a question from Akash right now before we go on to our next topic of discussion and next update. So we have good morning from a couple of our viewers to good morning to all, to Amit, to Sunil, a good morning, a very good morning to you. Then we have a question from Akash. My study permit will be expiring in May 2024, which is next year. My husband's power open work permit will also be expiring same. Now, while applying for my PDWP, should I include my husband for follow as well, the same for PDWP application? I should first 
put my PGWP and then apply for school. I am going uh, doing a warehouse job. Work a job is around eighteen dollars an hour. Some people have mentioned that the refusal rate will be higher than not doing a knocky job while applying for it. I read the old post in the group but did not match my criteria. Please kind. Okay, that's a very nice question, Akash. Uh, I know you're into this situation. To just now to answer that, can you apply both the application at the same time? This is what we usually do. We just keep a one day difference gap to be on. If you don't do it on the same day, we apply for your post graduation work permit. Once we get the letter of the submission and the next day we apply for your spouse so that we have a confirmation on which we can submit in your spouse application that yes, your application has been submitted and it's already in the process. And this is the proof of that. Regard that is how we usually do and that's what we can recommend you doing it. Second, for you to answer it's a warehouse job where you're doing an 1800 hour job. So right now, they have been, uh, we have been getting visas where even husbands and wife, because they were uh, new rules announced. According to that, you don't still need a knock and no, sorry, OAB job or tier 012 job to apply for your spouse and work permit. All you need is you should be working. And we have got visas where without NOC knock recently our visa, in fact, not just extensions, the recent visas from India we are getting have been approved. Just spouse been working on a NOCSI or D level job too. So there should not be a problem. And so that's how we will like you to proceed ahead. But if you still have any question or any concern to your question, uh, if, you have, if you have further question, uh, then definitely you can get back to us and we will be happy to answer those questions for you. So thank you Akash for asking in other viewers also if you have any doubt any questions uh, right now you can definitely go ahead and ask your question we still have few minutes left in this show and we have a lot of updates to give you and meanwhile you'll get time to definitely ask your questions too. The next topic we want to discuss is we have talked about the most uh, important topic of the week which was your international student will they be capped or not that is something we need to See if that, that happened. Doesn't seem to be very realistic, but let's see how it goes from here. There should be updates coming in the following weeks. And now, uh, <clears throat> if we talk about the spousal PR application, because we get a lot of other clients uh, who are still are not aware of the new rules of spousal open work permit. Like, there were a lot of things which have changed in the last one year. Like, initially, if we talk about if you are on a study permit, uh, sorry, if you want to invite at the PR, if you are PR on road, and you're applying for and your even spouse is on shore and if you apply for PR you were given an option to apply for a spousal open work permit uh, sorry a work permit while you're waiting for the PR that option was also open for offshore application for example you are in Canada your spouse is back home in the home country and you have applied for PR application and you want your spouse to invite for a work permit you can do that while your PR application the process you don't want to do a work permit, you just want to do a visitor application, even that is allowed now. It hardly, and the good thing is, the processing time has been has slowed. Uh, uh, sorry, the processing time is much, much better now. Most of the visitor visa application or even the work permit application are been getting approved in less than a month's time, or maybe just over a month's time, <clears throat> these applications are getting approved. So my recommendation to you will be yes if you are inviting your spouse and you want to con uh, on a, if you are a citizen and a permanent resident contact our office we have got almost 100% success rate in spousal PR application and spousal uh, work permit application so you can contact us and we can we'll rest assured make sure that you get your your spouses are being uh, getting their work permits and their PR application process so these were the changes which were introduced this year so if you are somebody who is not aware of it definitely uh, important information for you if you want us to help you submitting your application for your spouse PR application first and then subsequently uh, submitting their work permit or visitor application you can contact us and we will be happy to assist you and answer your questions regarding to that now I just want to talk about the international students who are coming here on a private in a, in a private PCC college what should they do and should they actually select a private college Definitely, there are a lot of good private colleges across Canada, but the only problem with studying in a private college, if you come to Canada, is that you're not eligible for a post-graduation work permit until and unless that college has a pathway or have a, uh, uh, an articulation with a university or a college which gets you, uh, which makes you lead to complete a program which is eligible for post-graduation work permit. So the bottom line is, there's no harm in coming to a private college at all. 
if the college has a pathway leading to a permanent residency course to other university or college. If they don't, then definitely you should be very, very careful while selecting your college. Because if you are coming to a private college which don't have a post-graduation work permit, then definitely you are spending a lot of money coming to Canada and will not be getting a post-graduation work permit. So eventually you will have to change your college to another private college or a public college uh, before you actually get a visa being granted to you. So that is definitely for you to understand and make sure you need to check with your consultant and agents back home that they are not misguiding you. They are giving you the correct information about the college. Even you can check that information. All the information regarding post and work permit eligibility is available online. You can just search a DLI institution, right, Designated Learning Institution Canada, go to their website, select the province and select the name of the college and in the front of the college name it will be clearly mentioned well, is that eligible for post-graduation work permit or not. But what you need to also understand is if it says no, but if they have a articulation, even it says no, it, they, you still become eligible for post-graduation work permit because the, what they given on the website is just about if you are doing a diploma directly from that institution. But as far as those institutions have, have uh, articulation or leading a diploma to some other public colleges and you can complete that, then definitely you can uh, go ahead and study in a private college too. That's not a problem at all. But make sure you're doing this research because until unless you do that, once you're in Canada, you will have to change your college again which is going to cost you more. You've already spent 10,000, 20, 20 to 30,000 dollars just get your visa and coming and just paying another fee may not be an easy task for you because you may not get refund from those colleges. So make sure your research is very good. You are aware of it, which college and which universities are you selecting then only opt for the study visa option. And if you need our assistance, definitely we do represent all the public colleges very good private colleges across Canada where we can help you come and settle down, get a good program, complete your education, apply for post-graduation work permit, apply for permanent residency later on. You can contact Network Immigration Solutions. We have an office back home in India too which helps in college admissions. So if we are looking for any sort of college admissions help, either it's onshore or offshore, we can help you. You're already in Canada, you came to a private college and you think, that is not where you want to study and you want to apply for your post-graduation work permit uh, and want to change your college to a different university or college, again contact us and we can help you in changing your college from a private to a public college. Not even that, if you have completed a one-year program and looking for a second year program in Ontario, we can also help you in that regard. So contact us for all your immigration need, for all your admission need, we definitely can assist you. We have an expert team and we have got rich experience and also we do represent a lot of universities and colleges across Canada so you can take our services for that too. We have a couple of more questions let me answer them. <clears throat> can a student endeavor to online classes? Okay so Richard uh, I'm not pretty sure what exactly you mean by here but just to give you an update a uh, lot of programs in Canada are now hybrid programs, online programs where you can where you don't have to uh, where you don't have to uh, go to the college every day. They are hybrid models. Even there are a lot of programs where almost uh, everything is online, but you have to be in Canada. But it depends on, uh, I don't know what as I said, I don't know exactly what you mean, but defer to online classes. It depends on the program and the college you are attending. If they have a program approved, which is an online program or a distance education program, then definitely you can do that. But you need to check that with your institution or the college and then take the step accordingly. Then Akash is asking a question, how do I apply for spousal sponsorship? So Akash, you can invite your spouse on a spousal sponsorship PR if you are a permanent resident, Canadian citizen, or you are even into a common law relationship with somebody you have been there, uh, you can establish that common law relationship and you can invite your spouses and your uh, partners for a spousal open work permit application. There are a lot of things you need to consider in mind when you apply for a spousal visa application. First of all, you need to prove the relationship is genuine, that is very important and a key factor when an officer looks at your application, you need to have all the documentations related to your marriage, related, related to your relationship in the file, and definitely there are a lot of forms and everything to be submitted uh, along with the application. So make sure you have all the information and if you again, if this is not easy, spousal PR applications are not easy to do. Uh, 
Uh, if you're doing it yourself, yes, you can do it, but you have to be very careful. But if you need expert advice, definitely you can contact us and we can assist you and help you getting your spousal work permit approved. Spousal PR application process, either you're a citizen PR or, or uh, even if you are in a common law relationship, and you, but you have to be still a PR citizen, then definitely we can help you getting your spouse here on a spousal sponsorship. Richard has a question for, I have a brother in Canada, he wants to defer to another school and apply for online classes. Richard, as I just told you, yes, your brother can change to some other institution if he's already in Canada. Can he do online and offline? That depends on the program, depends on the institution. So either you can contact us, we can help him getting admission into a good university and colleges, but that is not up to you or up to a consultant to decide. It totally depends on the college program approval and the college you're selecting that how will you be uh, how can you get those defer to online classes or if you can but as i said we can assist you in definitely finding a good university and colleges so you can contact richard on in our office and we will be happy to assist you in that regard so uh, if you have any further questions definitely you can go ahead and still ask we will be wrapping up this session but as i told you the session is usually for 20 to 30 minutes so we are almost coming to the end of the session if you have any concern or question kindly contact networks immigration and we will be uh, happy to assist you Richard definitely yes you can ask your brother to contact us we have a dedicated team who looks after college admissions so they can assist your brother in finding a good university in colleges as far as he's meeting the requirement of the college we will make sure that he gets admission according to the availability of seat in that college so if you are onshore or offshore student looking for college admission you can contact us in the office or Canada we can help you and assist you in that if you are somebody who's looking for immigration Again, we can help you in Canada for any sort of immigration help you are looking for. Spousal PR, spousal application, express entry, PNP programs, entrepreneur programs, any category of program you talk about, we do. Uh, we have got very high success rate and we represent almost all clients in all category of immigration we do. So you can contact our office in Brampton. We are located in part of Brampton, very close to Brampton Gateway Terminal. We have another location in Alberta and we have got third location back home in India in Karnal where you can again contact us for your visitor visa needs, your study permit, your uh, uh, work permit or your spousal application. You can contact or any of your offices and you will get the best services possible and we will make sure, try to definitely make sure that you get a good and positive results of the application. So thank you all for joining in. I just My name is Vishal Manocha. I am the owner and director at Network Immigration Solutions. We have been practicing immigration for very, very long and into this industry for almost two decades now. So you can definitely trust our services and we can we will make sure that you are getting a positive results to your application. So thank you once again for joining in. We will see you live next Friday again, same time 11 a.m. Till then, have a great weekend, great week ahead and we will see you all next Friday 11 a.m. Till then, goodbye and have a good week.